Jacob Rees was a Danish immigrant who came to New York uh, in 1870. He was about 20 years old. Uh, when he arrived in America, he was uh, poor, uh, didn't really know anybody, uh, but he did have a trade. He was a carpenter, didn't know some English. Uh, and after drifting around for several years, he landed in the world of journalism. Um, and in the late 1870s, Reese became a police reporter. Um, he reported on all kinds of uh, police activities in the city in the 1870s and 1880s. Um, and while he was doing that, uh, he became particularly interested in what he thought of as the single biggest problem facing New York City in the late 19th century. And that problem was housing. Uh, the tenements of New York, uh, the multi uh, apartment dwellings that had grown up uh, were increasingly uh, forced to house a growing population of immigrants. The 1880s and 1890s in New York saw an enormous increase in uh, immigrants, uh, particularly from Eastern and Southern Europe. Um, and Reese, um, uh, in covering the police and covering um, things like um, uh, 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 disease epidemics, uh, uh, you know, murders, uh, uh, some of the, the real problems of the poor, uh, became convinced that the, the, the key to sort of dealing with New York social problems was addressing housing. But he was frustrated by his inability uh, to communicate in words what he saw in some of the worst neighborhoods of Lower Manhattan. Uh, in the late 1880s, Reese read about the invention of um, flash powder, magnesium powder. Um, in Germany, uh, some photographers had developed this. Um, and what it meant was that you could now use artificial light to take pictures where previously you could not take pictures. Uh, so Reese taught himself the rudiments of uh, flash photography, and he began going around to some of the worst neighborhoods of, of Manhattan um, with a couple of uh, amateur photographer friends and also always accompanied by police. And he would literally burst into people's apartments at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, shoot off a gun to light the flash powder, and create this artificial light uh, that allowed him to photograph um, the overcrowding, uh, the, uh, uh, the squalid conditions, uh, just how bad the tenement life had become in New York. Um, he took these pictures and then made what were called lantern slides out of them. And for a couple of years, in 1889, 1890, Reese traveled around the country, uh, speaking mostly to Christian uh, audiences, um, churches, temperance groups, and so on. Uh, and he gave a slide lecture that he called The Other Half, How It Lives and Dies in New York. Um, and these uh, uh, really uh, essentially vaudeville exhibitions uh, featured Reese talking about the poor in New York, showing these very, very uh, provocative photographs, sometimes with music. Um, he would tell jokes, take questions. It was really a kind of entertainment, and it was reviewed as such in the newspapers. Uh, but in 1890, uh, Reese converted this uh, slide lecture and adapted it into a book, probably his most famous work, uh, published in 1890, titled How the Other Half Lives. Uh, which was the first book really to try to use photography uh, to illustrate social conditions of the day. Uh, How the Other Half Lives made a huge impact on people. Um, it became a sort of inspiration for a lot of folks who went into social reform. Um, it allowed Reese to quit his job as a newspaper reporter uh, and to become a full-time lecturer and writer. Um, over the next uh, uh, 15, 20 years or so, Reese published several sequels to How the Other Half Lives, books like um, Children of the Slum, Children of the Poor, I should say, The Battle with the Slum. Uh, and he became one of the leading um, social reformers of his day. Um, his real goal was to try to prick the conscience um, of New Yorkers, particularly uh, of wealthy New Yorkers. Um, Reese himself was not a radical, not even really much of a, of a, of a social reformer. Uh, he saw himself really as more of a publicist, somebody who was trying to call attention um, to the terrible conditions he saw in, in New York City. Um, and Reese's idea for how to solve the problem of overcrowding in tenement housing uh, was nothing like the kind of stuff that comes later in the 20th century. He wasn't talking about slum clearance. He wasn't talking about federal housing projects. He was talking rather about appealing to the conscience of Christian philanthropists. If only wealthy Christian gentlemen would put their money into building housing, if only they would take less of a profit, if only they would really try to bring a sense of Christian charity uh, to the housing of the poor, Reese thought that, that we could solve the problem. Now, he uh, became very well known. Uh, in 1902, he published his uh, own autobiography called The Making of an American, which was a bestseller. Uh, he became very good friends with Theodore Roosevelt, um, first governor of New York, later president of the United States. Um, and so Reese was really, in some ways, uh, the first muckraker, the first investigative journalist, 
the first progressive era American who really tried to use the power of photography and publicity um, to arouse the conscience of the American public. Um, but what's interesting to me, among other things, is that he only took photographs for a brief time. And when Reese died in 1914, he sent, his papers were sent to the Library of Congress, but not the photographs. And it wasn't until about 30 years later um, that the photographs were rediscovered. A big trunk full of uh, glass plate negatives found in the um, attic of the house where he lived. Um, and after World War II, Reese was sort of rediscovered. His reputation was revived. Um, and his photographs became a sensation. Uh, many people argue that Reese is really the, the beginning, the, sort of the ground zero um, for social documentary photography. Uh, that may be true, but it's interesting that the, the meaning of the photographs has changed over time. He never saw himself as an artist, never thought of himself as a professional photographer, and yet these photographs have, are among the most widely reproduced images in the history of the medium. Um, and so, uh, Reese's photos today are often used to illustrate uh, urban poverty, used to illustrate the problems of the city. Um, and a lot of students today, particularly who read How the Other Half Lives and some of his other writings, are struck and often uh, um, sort of uh, uh, shocked by the disjunction between the photographs, which are largely sympathetic, um, showing people uh, uh, in difficult situations, and the writing, uh, which is full of the kind of racial and ethnic stereotyping that was common in the 1890s and early 1900s. Uh, so Reese is, is a contradictory figure. He's full of all kinds of, of, of internal contradictions. Uh, in some ways, he's a guy who looks back to the 19th century uh, to sort of sentimental writing about the poor. Um, in another way, he is forward-looking into the 20th century. He, in some ways, represents the beginning of progressivism, uh, the insistence on doing careful um, uh, analysis of conditions, of, of gathering data, using statistics as well as photographs to make a case about the need for social reform. Um, so for all these reasons, Reese is, a, I think, a fascinating character who brings together so many of the contradictions of the American reform tradition.